Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms. I'm Dan. Well, it's finally arrived. Order 66. Talk about an episode that could be best described as a ball of anxiety and sadness that hits you straight in the groin. And the music this episode, which was ominous and foreboding, didn't help one bit. It just compounded upon the anxiety I felt this entire episode. So hats off to Kevin Kiner. No matter how many times I read or watch something from Star Wars that depicts Order 66, my heart is never ready and breaks every single time. My love for Star Wars grew from my love for these laser sword wielding space wizards and seeing the decimation of the Jedi Order never fails to leave me utterly melancholy and it was as much of a bummer as I would have expected. The episode opens following the aftermath of the Siege of Mandalore. We see that Sundari was hit hard by this conflict, and knowing that these Republic forces will transition to Imperial Stormtroopers and Mandalore will feel the wrath of the Empire is such a bummer, man. Ahsoka does tell Bo-Katan that Mandalore will need a leader like her, but we know what's coming based on the information we got from Star Wars Rebels and The Mandalorian, and at some point in the future, the Night of a Thousand Tears is on the horizon for the people of Mandalore. We then see that Ahsoka joins in on a hollow transmission that we're all too familiar with. The discussion from Revenge of the Sith, where May says he senses a plot to destroy the Jedi. Ahsoka isn't able to share any information on what she's learned from Maul about Sidious and his plot, or that Maul informed her Anakin will become his apprentice, because Mace is just too much of a jerk ass to be bothered by this lowly citizen. On one hand, you can make the argument that Mace's frustrations with Ahsoka for leaving the Order is coming out here, but I don't think that's the case. Mace is a prime example of the Jedi losing their way. Their Order is supposed to be there to keep the peace and to help those in need, but Mace and others on the Jedi Council have taken such a dogmatic view of being a Jedi, and as Ahsoka mentioned two episodes ago, are more concerned about politics and the image of the Order. So of course he doesn't want to talk to Ahsoka, who's no longer a Jedi and is merely a Republic citizen. Let's talk about the fact that none of the other Masters could be bothered to ask Ahsoka how she's been or if she's okay, and that Mace, Kiati Mundi, and Ayala Sakura couldn't care less about someone whom they've known for more than a decade, and it's only Yoda who stays on the transmission at the end to speak to Ahsoka on a more personal level. None of them could even be bothered to say goodbye to Ahsoka. Only Yoda? That bummed me out a ton. Since Ahsoka is no longer a Jedi, she's no longer important enough to the other Jedi Masters. Yo, Mace sucks, and the fact that he played a big role in the downfall of the Jedi Order will forever make him one of my least favorite Jedi. I still love his purple lightsaber though. Anyway, we then see that Maul is imprisoned in this special Mandalorian Jedi constraining contraption, which Bo-Katan's sister, Satine Cries, outlawed the use of them, but this is a special situation and it's actually the last one. Ahsoka is preparing to bring Maul back to Coruscant with Rex and the Republic forces, and her and Bo-Katan bid each other farewell. I'm assuming this possibly is the last time they see each other, but that could always change since there's a lot of time unaccounted for with Ahsoka and Bo-Katan after the events of Order 66. Their relationship is one that I really appreciate in Star Wars. They were first adversaries when they met on Karlak, now they're friends and have admiration for one another. Once on the Republic Star Destroyer, Maul is taken to a holding cell and Ahsoka joins Rex on the bridge. Rex asks Ahsoka what's wrong and this dialogue between the two of them was seriously grueling. Ahsoka talks about the Jedi being soldiers as opposed to peacekeepers and the fact that she was thrusted into fighting in this conflict as a mere teenager. And Rex talks about the catch-22 feelings that the clones have about the war that some of them wish it never happened, but without the war, there would be no clones and no Rex. When Ahsoka tells Rex that she couldn't have asked for a better friend, I felt a lump in my throat. Ugh, man, just all the feels, guys, all the feels. We then see Maul and Ahsoka can both sense what's happening between Mace, Anakin, and Sidious. And then just like that, Darth Sidious initiates Order 66 and Rex and the clones begin to turn on Ahsoka. But before Rex starts to shoot at Ahsoka, he tells her to find Fives and you can see my man is trying to fight what the inhibitor chip is forcing him to do as well as a small tear stream down his face. Insert Darth Vader no clip here.
Rex and the clones attack Ahsoka, but she's able to escape and then freeze Maul so that he can create some chaos on the Star Destroyer and give her an opportunity to escape. But she has no desire to team up with him, nor does she give him a lightsaber. Maul lets Ahsoka know that he didn't know the full depth of Sidious' plan, but he finds the plan brilliant, which I mean, it truly is. That's what makes Darth Sidious, well, so insidious. Ahsoka then finds several astromechs, one of which really reminds me of Chopper from Star Wars Rebels and learns about Fives and how he experienced a malfunction in his inhibitor chip and that Rex filed a grievance where he states the inhibitor chips had a purpose that wasn't fully understood. And now Ahsoka knows what caused the clones to turn on the Jedi. We then see Maul making his way down a hallway full of clones and I couldn't help but be reminded of the scene with Darth Vader at the end of Rogue One. Same goes for the multiple times we see both Ahsoka and Maul use the Force to lift some went up to the ceiling like Darth Vader did in Rogue One. And when the blast door cuts off the clone trooper's arm, damn. Ahsoka R7 and the other astromechs then are able to stun Rex and get him to a medical bay where their plan is to scan his brain and remove his inhibitor chip. But the scan initially doesn't find anything until Ahsoka starts using the force on Rex and ugh, when she's chanting I am one with the force and the force is with me and Rex is saying it back, yet another callback to Rogue One and I loved it. While this is going on, clone troopers arrive and are beginning to make their way into the room. They soon are able to force their way in and Ahsoka does her best to fight them off before our boy Rex comes to her aid and helps to fight back the clones. Rex then tells Ahsoka that the entire Grand Army of the Republic is going to hunt down the Jedi and the episode ends. That episode was truly grueling and I felt completely uneasy for almost the entirety of it. I'm assuming that the finale, which airs the day after my birthday on May 4th, Star Wars Day, is going to delve into some of what was discussed in the Ahsoka novel, which stated Ahsoka and Rex faked their deaths, dug false graves, and Ahsoka left her lightsabers behind. But we'll have to wait and see on Monday. But what did you guys think of this episode? Check out this playlist on the Clone Wars. Please like and subscribe, and stay nerdy.